Welcome to Big Pole Discipleship 101, The Bible in a Year, Week 40, Malachi and Matthew 1 through 14, From God's Love to Human Doubt. Malachi is the last of the prophetic books. He lived about a hundred years after the return from Babylon. His name means my messenger. Haggai and Zechariah prophesied a new Jerusalem if Israel was faithful. But they were just as unfaithful as their ancestors. Their corruption is laid out as a conversation between God and Israel. Malachi is the last book in the Christian Old Testament. In the Jewish order, it comes right before the Psalms. In Malachi 1, what proof does God give that he's always loved the people of Israel? How have the priests shown contempt for God's name in chapter 1, verses 7 through 8? How might that relate to our church offerings today? In Malachi 2, what's the covenant with Levi in verse 8? Why does God also mention another covenant, the marriage covenant? How is the marriage covenant part of their covenant with God? How did they falsely accuse God in verse 17? How is Malachi 3 verse 1 significant? What are some of their national problems in verse 6? Do we have similar problems today? How does God invite them to test him in chapter 3 verses 8 through 10? What does God say about the faithful remnant in chapter 3 verses 16 through 18? What attitude does Malachi 4 verse 2 show that those have who revere God's name in the day of the Lord? What theory of hell does Malachi 4 verse 3 contribute to? What's an important job of the church in these last days? Chapter 4 verse 6. Thus ends the Old Testament. Matthew weaves many Old Testament quotations into the story of Jesus. Why do the unimportant of this world respond to Jesus while the religious are prideful and unresponsive? Matthew chapters 1 through 3 connects the story of Jesus to the Old Testament. In Matthew 1, which genealogy do we have? Joseph's or Mary's? What's the significance of Jesus being the son of David, son of Abraham? In Matthew 2, who were the wise men from the east? What did King Herod order? What did an angel warn Joseph to do? What are some prophecies fulfilled by Jesus' birth? How did Jesus coming up out of Egypt picture Jesus as a second Moses? How did Jesus' baptism picture Israel's baptism in Moses? In Matthew 4, how was Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness similar to Israel's 40 years wandering? Why is Jesus tempted by Satan significant? How are the calling of Peter, Andrew, James, and John different? In Matthew 5 through 7, Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount. What is the significance of explaining the law of Moses on a mountain? What are the rules of happiness? What actions make us salt and light? How is the law made full? What is the spirit of murder? What's the opposite of murder? What is the spirit of adultery? What kinds of actions prevent adultery? Self-mutilation is a sin, and Jesus only uses it as a hyperbolic teaching tool indicating drastic action. What's the spirit of bearing false witness? Is an eye for an eye about vengeful mutilation or financial compensation? How hard is it to love an enemy? In Matthew 6, how is giving to show off different than giving to be salt and light in the world? How is praying or fasting to show off different than how Jesus would have us do so? What valuable lesson have you learned from Jesus' teachings on money? How do Jesus' teachings help you overcome worry? In Matthew 7, how is judgmentalism different than discernment? Why does Jesus teach about persistent prayer? How should the golden rule apply today? Why did Jesus say that few enter the gate to life? If we should not judge, how do we discern false prophets? What's the mark of a true disciple? What does Jesus say is the rock in this context? In Matthew 8, what do we learn from Jesus healing the leper, the Roman officer's servant, and others? What's the cost of following Jesus? What does the storm teach us about fear? What do we learn from his healing two demon-possessed men? In Matthew 9, when healing a paralyzed man, why did Jesus forgive his sins? What did Jesus mean, I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices? 
What did Jesus mean by new cloths and new wineskins? Is faith always needed for healing? What faith did the dead girl show? Why did Jesus ask the healed blind men not to tell anyone? Why are the workers few? In Matthew 10, where was the first missionary journey to? What were the disciples to do if rejected? What does it mean God can destroy both soul and body in hell? How do we acknowledge Christ publicly? What does it mean if you give up your life for me, you will find it? In Matthew 11, why did John doubt who Jesus was? What will happen to unrepentant towns? How is our Sabbath rest in Jesus? How is his burden light? In Matthew 12, were the disciples really breaking the Sabbath or only picky human rules? What did Jesus mean, I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices? How does the law permit a person to do good on the Sabbath? Do Christians sometimes hypocritically crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle? How was falsely accusing Jesus of demon work uncomfortably close to the unforgivable sin? How is a tree identified by its fruit similar to our words? How will Nineveh judge a generation that refuses to listen? Who is the true family of Jesus? In Matthew 13, can you explain the parable of the sower, the wheat and tares, the mustard seed, the leaven, the hid treasure, the pearl of great price, the net? When is a prophet without honor? Why? In Matthew 14, what do we learn from the death of John the Baptist? What do we learn from Jesus feeding the large crowd? How does walking on water help us today? Would Jesus also say to us, You have so little faith, why did you doubt me? Well, that's it for this week. Until next time, God bless you.